Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a six-pack, the Scotty Six-Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports at just six days a week. I am your host, Kedrick Stumbrus, and you can follow me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six-Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. While you're here, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, either on your podcast platform of choice or on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six-Pack. And as always, hit that bell so you get notified as soon as we put new episodes into your feed. And we have a phenomenal one for you today. We're going to be talking this Wisconsin women's hockey team, where they've been so far this season, where they are going, because we did a great preview episode with 1070 of the game in Madison's Noah Clark. And he is here again, friend of the pod, Noah, to help us break down everything that has happened so far in this women's hockey season and what's coming next, because we have a potential potential back-to-back national championship on our hands here. Uh, I know. Thank you very much for, for joining the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm glad it's glad to be back on here again and cannot wait to talk about these, these upcoming games, Wisconsin, Minnesota, the next door neighbors going at each other here. This is going to be fun. This is, I, I always refer to this as maybe, the best rivalry in all of sports, quite frankly. Um, and I know that it doesn't get the limelight like Bears Packers does or, you know, Celtics Lakers. But the stakes on the line every time these two programs meet, Minnesota and Wisconsin, who who will be playing in Madison this weekend in kind of the unofficial start of the women's hockey season. If, if you, if you tune in late in the game, right, Wisconsin plays Minnesota, Ohio state late in the year. And then they go right into the postseason when things really heat up. And every time these two programs, the golden gophers and the badgers meet, there's national championship stakes on the line every single time for regular season, jockeying for seeding in the postseason to a potential, you know, birth to the tournament on the line. I, I love this rivalry. It is one of my absolute favorites in every single sport that I watch. Uh, And now we're going to get a chance to, I I mean, see it unfold. And these two teams are again in second and third place in the conference, jockeying for seating, jockeying to potentially have that, that all important second line change in the semifinals of the WCHA final face off is, as we look forward a couple of weeks from now. Yeah. And I mean, any like you you set it up perfectly, Kedrick. Like whenever Wisconsin Minnesota meet in whether it be football, whether it be basketball, whether mm-hmm. it be like softball or soccer, these two teams, you know, just seem to hate each other. Like these two schools <laughs> just really seem to hate each other. But the one sport that I think they hate each other the most in is hockey. If you look at either men's or women's, these two schools, you know, both really high in national championships always really successful in both of these programs and just going back to last year. I mean, these two were playing in the frozen four for a national championship or Mm -hmm. for a chance to go to the national championship. Mm -hmm. And it it just, it just goes to show how incredible this rivalry is, you know? And, and like I said, Kendrick, it's like your next door neighbor. You have to exist with them. You may not like them, but like they're there and you just have to hate them regardless no matter how long it is. It, it certainly helps that in, you know, women's hockey, the, the world is smaller. So, so many of these athletes on, on both sides of this matchup, they, they grew up playing together. They grew up playing together on the same teams, on opposing teams. There, there are young, young women on these teams who have been playing hockey with or against each other, their entire, you know, t- 19, 20 something year old lives. Uh, and, and makes for an excellent, excellent matchup. But let's, let's talk a little bit about, how, how the Badgers have gotten here so far. Badgers have um, a, a slight lead on Minnesota in, in the conference standings, a seven, the trail Ohio state by seven points. They're, they're going to have to get, you know, all, all six points. They're going to need a clean sweep of Minnesota this weekend and, and how they got here is on the back of some of their very, very best players. And, and one of them is Caroline Harvey, who, who came into this program last year with all kinds of pedigree. She delayed, her, her entrance to the program because she got a spot on the Olympic team uh, and took the program by storm playing in 
every game as a rookie was the conference rookie of the year, a finalist for defense defensive player of the year. Uh, and, and this season, despite having some downtime with injury is uh, giving it a full go and looks as good as she has at any point this season, uh, had multi-point games over the weekend against Bemidji state, which the Badgers rolled the Beavers in. Frankly, I think Caroline Harvey looks even better than she did last year. I think she's making a real case that although she won't win a Patty Kazmaier award for the best player in women's college hockey this season, just because she hasn't been healthy the whole season, she's making a case for the best player in the country right now. And, you know, wh what do you think about that question? Is, is she making that case and how, if at all, has she improved her game this season? She's definitely improved her game, not only on the offensive side, I think of the defensive side. You talk about a lot. You look at college hockey now, or just hockey in general, and we've talked about this on our show. And I've said this on Puckworms too, uh, Sam Jamini's podcast as well. But scoring defenseman is now kind of the the kind of you know up and coming. You see a lot more of these defensemen getting like you know leading their team in goals, leading their team in points. You mm -hmm. don't you you haven't seen that you know back in the days you know back in the early 2010s, you know, or in the 2000s era. You just didn't see that where you saw defensemen putting up these amazing kind of numbers. Now you look, it's gone wildly over into now the NHL and now in women's hockey. And Caroline Harvey is a great example of that. This year, you know, you look at last year even. Just look at last year, her freshman year. She played 42 games, 13 goals, 26 assists for 39 points. This year even too, with her injury, she still is on pace to pass her season high from last year in points. Only mm -hmm. five goals, but still 26 assists on the year to have 31 points. And her offensive play has been really incredible. But defensively, she's really improved. She's really, you know, a lot smarter in where she wants to go in terms of, you know, in terms of pressuring a, pressuring a player, in terms of, you know, being able to pressure the player and forcing a pass. And then on top of that, her decision-making, I think, has been really good as well. She's been much more decisive with the puck, not trying to look mm. shot first, but always look pass first. When you look at it, I mean, I said it, five goals this year, but 26 assists. She's not looking shot first. She's looking pass first. And you look at it, guys like Kirsten Sims, you know, players like Casey O'Brien, they're getting their chances from passes from Caroline Harvey. So I think those are the two things that I think have really improved her game. And once she starts finding her scoring again, like that's going to take her to a whole nother level. And I, you know, talking to multiple people in this program, they think she may be the best player in Wisconsin women's hockey history when it's all said and done here at the university of Wisconsin. Uh, and I mean, that's, that's saying a whole lot for a program that just produced, um, the the first ever you know like kind of kind of a lifetime achievement award for a women's hockey player going to H Hillary Knight just just a couple of nights back, um, given to her by by USA Hockey. If, I, am I getting in the right? You you know what I'm talking about here? Yeah. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Okay, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, um, yeah, that was fun to see. But let's 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 dig it a little bit more. And one of these players that you, you talk about that Caroline Harvey's been doing a great job of setting up the season, and that and that is Kirsten Sims, who is having just an otherworldly season, right? She, she's already up to 50 points with four regular season games to go. A sophomore who has put up 56 points. She put up 32 in her, in her rookie season. Should we be surprised by this ascension? I mean, she is already putting up 24 more points than she did a season ago with four regular season games, uh, a potential, uh, what's that? Another seven postseason games on top of that should we be surprised yeah. by this ascension from from kirsten sims or, or should this be expected for her to build off of i mean such a, an already electric rookie season last year i mean not at all i i'm not surprised by the way sims has played you know you look at it last year she was on the all tournament team in the you know for for the ncaa tournament last year and she's continuing her performance going into this season. And it's really incredible. I mean, the way that Kirsten Sims has played this year, I mean, she's leads the, she leads all of college hockey 
in points this year. She leads all of college hockey in points this year, all of college hockey in goals, and it's not even close this year. I mean, you for look as at much it, as we're saying, Caroline Harvey might be the best player in the country, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. But like Kirsten Sims, it's not even close. She's got 25 goals this year and 31 assists, which is, you know, with a total of 56 points. It's really impressive what she's done this year. And it's the same thing with Caroline Harvey, where Kara, but it's the opposite. Caroline Harvey looks for pass first. Kirsten Sims is always looking for shot first. And mm. the way that the, the, you know, and the numbers show it. I mean, like she leads the country in goals this year. She's really not, she's really not looking pass first, which last year she was kind of looking pass first for this team. And now she's looking shot first. And this is something that I think is huge for this Badger team. Because let's say if Casey O'Brien leaves next year, let's say if Casey O'Brien doesn't come back and stay another year, they have a really good replacement in Kirsten Sims who could take over that Casey O'Brien role. And she's feeling it so, 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 so well. And I think that's one thing that I think not many people are talking about is Kirsten Sims right now by year three probably is going to do what Casey O'Brien could be doing in year three, uh, what she did last year. Yeah, and, and and let's dig into the Casey O'Brien of it all. Uh, of course, an electric scorer in her own right. She she has that COVID year if she wants to return next season. Uh, but I, I remember having this conversation with you before the season. Did, did Casey O'Brien kind of have a down year last year? She she produced 48 points, but only 19 goals after putting up 27 goals the year prior. Casey O'Brien led the team in scoring last year with 19 goals. Now, like you say, Kirsten Sims with the most goals in the country, already blowing that mark out of the water, already 25 goals on this season. Uh, but Casey O'Brien picking up, I mean, big time, 15 goals this season, already up to 52 points. She's she's going to easily, easily clear her her season record of, of 55, it seems like. Is Casey O'Brien having a bounce back season? Or, or did she just... Never, never leave. Were we underestimating, or was I at least underestimating the the impact she was still having on this team last season? I think we were kind of underestimating. I think it's both. I think we we're kind of underestimating. You know, if Casey O'Brien would bounce back because she did have a down year, and it's tough to say that because you look at who she had around her. I mean, when you have like when you have players like a Sophie Shirley and Nicole Lamontia, mm -hmm. a Natalie mm -hmm. Bookbinder, who did play for some of the season you have those players that are there and that are now gone. I mean, it's, it's, it's a different team, but now with Casey O'Brien coming back, it is kind of a bounce back year because she's now kind of what Sophie Shirley was the, the person who, if they need a goal, if they need to just generate some shots, she can get it for them. Mm -hmm. And, and Caroline Harvey hasn't generated that much shots. Britta curl, hasn't generated that much shots in, in kind of those moments, but Casey O'Brien this year has been whenever they needed a shot or whenever they needed, you know, someone to get that offense going, she has always been consistently the one to get this team going and get this team, you know, the scoring chances that they need. And I mean, you look at the numbers, Kedrick this year, last year was a down year. She only had 48 points this year though. She has 52, but, She's just playing and she's just playing so well. She's just playing so well offensively and defensively, particularly offensively, because, you know, she's one of the top players in the country. Yeah. And she broke 50 last week, too. So it's an incredible it's incredible what Casey O'Brien has done, because last year I, I, I personally did think she did have a down year. I was expecting her to really be kind of the focal point of that team, you know, but yeah, yeah. it didn't but it didn't pan out. And now this year. She is the focal point of that team and she's playing it super well uh, and, and not being, you know, so selfish to the point where she's, you know, kind of having to do everything herself. Yeah, it's it's almost like, you, you know, la last year you can think about how that team struggled at times, how, how that team was for a second there in, in the middle of the year on the outside looking in of the NCAA tournament picture before it ended up rattling off enough wins to just win the whole dang thing. Um, and part of that, it's because you, you expected, and you talk about this in like basketball terms. Sometimes you just need, you know, a, a Johnny Davis on your team, someone right. who you can trust to just go and get you a bucket. 
it's not often you have one of these players uh, on your team in hockey. You, you think about uh, a Sarah Nurse, an Annie Pankowski, uh, someone who you know with the puck on their stick, they're going to go and get you a bucket. Right now, Casey O'Brien and Kirsten Sims, Mark Johnson kind of has two players on his team who can go out and get him a bucket, and it's kind of a cheat code. It is, and it's crazy because you got the two players in the entire country that broke 50 this past weekend. So like that's, that's even better to have. Imagine telling, you know, Ohio state and Minnesota, you guys don't have the top, you know, two players in the 50 points range. We do. And they're both, you know, playing out of their minds. right now. Yeah. Yeah. This, this team is rolling. Uh, it is not without, you know, it's, it's downsides and let's we're, we're going to break down those downsides and break down some of the keys to this matchup uh, against uh, Minnesota this upcoming weekend. But first I, I want to tell you all about uh, my friends over at tick pick. Um, we we'll take Noah out of the show for just a second here. As we talk to you about the number one place where I go to buy tickets for every sporting event that I would like to go to. And that, that is on tick pick because tick pick does not believe in hidden fees. The price you see is the price you're going to get on, on tick pick. And it also comes with TickPick's best price guarantee. If you see the same tickets on another ticketing site for less than what you see them for on TickPick, TickPick's going to refund you 110% of the difference in credit toward your next purchase. And if you use my link in the podcast description, my link that's on the screen now, you're going to save 10 bucks on your first order. So go download the TickPick app. That's T-I-C-K-P-I-C-K. Click my link in the podcast description. Save 10 bucks on your first order. Maybe you're you're a Badger fan in, in Iowa or living in Southwest Wisconsin. You want to make the trick trek out to Iowa City. Go do that. Go cheer on the Badgers this weekend and, and buy your tickets on TickPick. Use my use my link. Tell them I sent you. Save ten bucks on your very first order. Uh, as we watch Wisconsin, you know, hopefully dismantle that that rough uh, I, Iowa defense over there. Uh, but as we bring Noah back in here, let, let's talk about what what we're going to talk about left this week on the show. And one of those things is. Uh, that Wisconsin Iowa game. We're, we're going to be breaking that down for you tomorrow uh, with a preview. Should hopefully be doing that with with an excellent guest we're, we're trying to bring on to the show. And then on Saturday, we'll we'll break down that game, put that into your feed that afternoon after that game has finished. All right, Noah. This team is not without its flaws. For for as high powered that its offense is, it's not without its flaws and. One of the things we talked about that might be a question mark for this team going into the season, we talked about goaltending. I'm not necessarily sure it's a weak spot on this team, but you know, along with what you think the weak spot on this team, I'd also like to get your perspective on, you know, what, what do we think about the goaltending this season? It's been Jane Gervais and even Ava McDaughton swapping out game to game, each one getting a start basically every weekend. Uh, what's the weak spot on this team? Is it goaltending? Is, is it something else? You know, it's it's a mix of both. It's goaltending, and it's very it's very little experience on the defensive mm. side. You you look at this team a year ago. They had Nicola Montias, Sophie Shirley, and and Natalie Bookbinder, and La Montia and Edwards and Kotlowski were kind of leading that group for the defensive. You know, for for defensemen. This year, it's a completely different group. This is a very young team. You look at it. They came into the season with 13 freshmen and sophomores combined, you know, 13 freshmen and sophomores combined. And yeah. a lot of them are seeing really big minutes. And the thing that just watching this Badger team in a lot of these games, it's just bad defensive, you know, it's bad defensive communication. Sometimes bad defensive breakdowns. They, they, they don't seem to know sometimes where they're going. They like to drift towards the puck, which is, is not something that we've usually seen from Mark Johnson led teams. They, you know, we've seen a lot of times where they are really, they are really disciplined in their team defense overall. They do not really let teams get past the blue line into their zone cleanly. Right. And that's been the issue. And I think along with that, the goaltending been pretty average this year. Jane Gervais, not really an all worldly goalie this year. We were kind of, you know, a lot of people were kind of expecting her this year to kind of take that step, take that ability, you know, take that step up after having to sit behind Cami Cronish, but she's been pretty average. And then the same thing with Ava McNaughton. I mean, 
McNaughton's a freshman. I mean, you can't knock her too much mm-hmm. on that, but still, like, there's been some games where she's played really bad and she's really not played her best. So overall, it's it's a mix of both. Inexperience of the defense and goaltending has just been really average. It hasn't been elite level like we've seen the last two or three years. It's just been it's been really average. And that kind of is what really could kill the Badgers when it gets into tournament time here. Yeah, you think about the the lineage of of goaltenders that have come through th- this program for so long. I mean, obviously dating all the way back to Jesse Vetter, but if, if you're just thinking, you know, going going back a short while, it, it, this was Anne Renee Debian's program for as long as she wanted it. She exits Wisconsin, you know, gets fortunate by the misfortune of Notre, or of North Dakota shuttering its women's program, and you pick up Kristen Campbell in the process, who's a multi-year starter for you that translates immediately into into cami cronish a- afterwards taking that mantle and now for kind of the first time you have some real question marks at, at goalie here for a team that just hasn't had them uh for i mean a, a decade or more um it's un- uncharted territory for for fans of the program for for mark johnson um so th- this upcoming weekend, maybe that goaltending comes it comes into question here. Maybe, maybe we are looking back at, at this weekend and say, all, all right, we we see where where the goal goaltending question has come into play. But I think another way, as you and I were talking about it before the show, was special teams play in the first series that Wisconsin and Minnesota played this season up in Minneapolis. There were six penalties called in the first game. There were seven penalties called in the second game. Special teams played a huge factor in this game. And so who who has the edge in special teams gameplay this weekend between Wisconsin and Minnesota? Right now, if I'm looking, I think Wisconsin has the, the slight advantage over Minnesota. You talk about the Gophers this year. They, they're a really good team defensively on the power pl- or offensively and defensively on the power play. They're number one in power play this year in penalty kill. They're, they're sitting at number five. Wisconsin fourth in power play, but I I think I give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, when you have the number one total offense in college hockey this year, (laughs) the power play doesn't really matter at that point. You throw it right out the window. Um, But the key, the the thing that I think we have to, to, to mention here, and you said this, Kedrick, like the penalties were huge in this game and Minnesota leads college hockey in penalty minutes. They just, put their mm. players into the sin bin at will. Like it, it's crazy. And the last time Wisconsin met Minnesota, a power play changed the, the, the complete momentum of this game. It shifted the complete me- momentum of this game. Lacey Eden got a shorthanded goal. And then about two minutes later, Britta Curl goes up and takes the lead for Wisconsin. So special teams is really huge. And I think Wisconsin's got the edge because when you have, like I said, when you have the number one offense in college hockey, the power plays don't matter at this point. But if I'm giving the edge, I think Wisconsin edges it out just a little bit more because they have those scores that can, that can instantly just give the momentum to them right away on the special teams unit. Yeah, I know. I know you talk about over on, um, uh, on your show, snap the pigskin, how, the the Fort San Francisco 49ers, uh, may they rest in peace, uh, have <laughs> have the Avengers uh, on their team, right? It's it's almost like you think of the same for this this Wisconsin team where they almost yeah. don't need the power play because five on five is their power play. Because when you have uh Kirsten Sims, when you have Casey O'Brien, when you have Britta Curl, when you have Lacey Eden, uh you you kind of have your your Kyle Hughes check your your <laughs> George Kittle or Demo, Demo Samuel ready for you. Uh right right there. Um and of course this this metaphor absolutely makes sense because there isn't uh a power play in football. Uh, uh excuse me. I need to get back on the horse here. Um all right. So I think this series is going is going to be a ton of fun. Uh, going to be played at Laban, where Wisconsin has only lost one game all year. Huge, one of the best barns in in the country in the sport. Uh, and whatever happens from this series, in it, of course, I think Wisconsin needs to get a series sweep over Minnesota and have a chance at the WCHA conference title. 
uh, Ohio State, you know, leads that leads that race by seven points. So you're going to need a little bit of help uh, here from Minnesota Duluth this weekend to give Wisconsin a chance at winning the conference title next season as they bring in, or sorry, next weekend as they bring in Ohio State. I think Wisconsin's firmly in the NCAA tournament picture with the expanded field. So I'm not super worried about that. So with all these things, you know, kind of settled or maybe outside of Wisconsin's hands, what, what are you looking to learn about this team in this series, regardless of the outcome? You know, it, it comes with a few things and I think it's, it's going to start with goaltending. Are we going to see someone really step up in goaltending? Because this is kind of the first year where goaltending isn't really like set in stone and very firm. And Jane Gervais, she's played well. Ava McNaughton, she's played well. But both of them have had their ups and downs. And you look at in the game ones when Jane Gervais has started, Jane Gervais will have some great nights and Jane Gervais will have some pretty bad nights. And one of the bad nights she had was against Minnesota. She led in five goals in that game. Really rough outing for her. Back in December. Now she could change that if she gets the win. On the other side of that, too, with Ava McNaughton, Ava McNaughton's had a pretty good year. You know, she's one of the top freshmen in the country, at least one of the top freshman goalies in the country, Mm -hmm. and doesn't really let anything get by her. So, but but still, you know, we she's also had a couple games too where she's made mistakes and she really hasn't been able to do she really hasn't been able to come in and really step up. So I think. Goaltending is going to be key uh, in this series. I also think, too, they were not healthy. And this was the key, I think, that was huge for them, why they didn't sweep in the first series. Mm. They weren't really fully healthy in that game. They didn't, they, they, you know, they didn't have Ava Murphy for one of the games. They didn't have Shayla Edwards for one of those games. Their defense was really banged up. Caroline Harvey, you know, was coming back from a, you know, from an injury and they had to play Minnesota Duluth, a tough, gritty, physical team. This team is going to be at full strength and, and depending on if Sarah Wozniewicz plays, cause she was out for the last two series, but depending on if she plays, we're going to see this team be at full strength. And we finally will get our chance to see what this team will look like when they're fully healthy and they have all their weapons, you know, when they have all their weapons, all their skaters out there on the ice for three periods. And if they win and if they win handsomely, I think great. You know, this looks like the team that we've been seeing, you know, the last few years dominate all of college hockey. If they lose a lot of concerns towards this team as, you know, saying "Uh, they're number one in the country in offense, but they don't seem like they are the number one team in offense. Yeah. I, I, and that Ohio State offense is in itself, you know, diff- difficult to stop, right? That, yeah. That's a great unit on, on its own, of course. And I, I have to correct myself. Ohio State is not playing Duluth this weekend. Ohio State hosts St. Thomas. So, uh, oh, that's a blowout. <laughs> Badgers might not Sorry. be getting very much help. Badgers might oh, not man. be getting very much help. Uh, they, they need St. Thomas to to complete the steal of all steals this weekend uh, is steal one point away from Ohio state and Wisconsin needs a clean sweep to give Wisconsin a chance at winning uh, the conference title with a then subsequent clean sleep sweep over Ohio state. So conference title is probably right. Regular season conference title, right? Probably in the rear view mirror, but I think you can find things about this team that you feel good about. If they can end the season playing hot last year's team, you know, really came into its own down, down the stretch of the season as well. So maybe you get, kind of the same things over the course of this year. Um, Yeah, I I think that's about all that I want to break down here. Um, Noah is excellent. Of course, we're going to keep having him back through through this home stretch of of the women's hockey season. Uh, We have a few weeks to go with this Minnesota series, the Ohio State series, the, the opening weekend of the conference tournament, then you have the second weekend of the conference tournament. And then you got a couple weekends of NCAA tournament action where hopefully Wisconsin's playing all, all the way through. And we'll have our, our weekly check-in here with, with Noah as, as we do it all. Uh, uh, Noah, please, please tell people where, where to find more Noah. Uh, thank you so much for, for coming back on and, and for being a friend. 
Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for having me on today, Kedrick. Uh, you guys can find me uh, on the interwebs, or as Kedrick likes to say, the app formerly known as Twitter, at Rigo Clark on uh, on Twitter. And you could also listen to uh, our show, me and Sam's show, Snap the Pigskin. We've actually had Kedrick on a couple times on our show as well. And it's just, uh, it's so fun. And then you can find me uh, Wednesdays, or actually no, Tuesdays, from six to seven on the student section uh, with me, Anthony, Joey, Chrissy, and the, and just all have a ball. We all have a ball, a blast. And yeah, so it, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun stuff. And yes, Re- Clark Rigo. I messed that up. I think it's Clark Rigo, not Rigo Clark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, got, I got, saw you. that I got on a little bit. I, like a... I knew, I knew your Twitter handle better than I know, you know, better than you know, your Twitter. My God. <laughs> Uh, but yes, check, <laughs> check out Noah, Noah's work, check out the work of, uh, WSUM's finest as, as Noah likes to call them the, yes, sir. the, the stable crew of play by play and, and color commentary folks for big 10 plus for, for Wisconsin events. Uh, yeah. Th- thank you very much, Noah, for coming on, on Wisconsin. Well, thank you for listening to the Scotty six pack podcast while you're here. Leave five stars, kind comments, a nice review, or subscribe on YouTube. Smash that like button while you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack, and hit the bell so you get notified as soon as we put new episodes into your feed, like this one with great guests, Noah Clark. We'll be talking to you all again tomorrow to preview Wisconsin and the fighting Fran McCaffrey's. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) We'll talk to you then.